this lecture is about uh, document lens normalization in the vector space model. In this lecture, we're going to continue the discussion of the vector space model. In particular, we're going to discuss the issue of document lens normalization. So far in the lectures about the vector space model, we have used the various signals from the document to assess the matching of the document with the query. In particular, we have considered the term frequency, the count of a term in a document. We have also considered its global statistics, such as IDF, inverse document frequency. But we have not considered a document length so here I show two example documents. D4 is much shorter, with only 100 words. D6, on the other hand, has 5,000 words. If you look at the matching of these query words, we see that in D6, there are more matchings of the query words. But one might reason that D6 may have matched these query words uh, in a scattered manner. So maybe the topic of D6 is not really about the topic of the query. So the discussion of campaign at the beginning of the document may have nothing to do with the mention of presidential at the end. In general, if you think about the long documents, they would have a higher chance to match any query. In fact, if you generate a long document randomly by simply sampling words, from a distribution of words, then eventually you probably will match any query. So in this sense, we should penalize long documents because they just naturally have better chances to match any query. And this is the idea of document length normalization. We also need to be careful in avoiding to over penalize long documents. On the one hand, we want to penalize a long document, but on the other hand, we also don't want to over penalize them. Now the reason is because a document may be long because of different reasons. In one case, the document may be long because it uses more words. So for example, think about a full text article of a research paper. It would use more words than the corresponding abstract. So this is a case where we probably should penalize the matching of a uh, long document such as a full paper when we compare the matching of words in such a uh, long document with matching of the words in a short abstract then long papers generally have a higher chance of matching query words therefore we should penalize them however there is another case when the document is long and that is when the document simply has more content now consider another case of a long document where we simply concatenated a lot of abstracts of different papers. In such a case, obviously, we don't want to over penalize such a long document. Indeed, we probably don't want to penalize such a document because it's long. So that's why we need to be careful uh, about uh, using the right degree of penalization. A method that has been working well uh, based on research results is called a pivot length normalization. And in this case, the idea is to use the average document length as a pivot, as a reference point. That means we'll assume that for the average length documents, the score is about right. So the normalizer would be one. But if a document is longer than the average document length, then there will be some penalization. Whereas if it's shorter, then there's uh, even some reward. So this is illustrated using this slide. On the x-axis, x -axis, you can see the length of the document. On the y-axis, we show the normalizer. In this case, the pivot length normalization formula for the normalizer is, uh, is seen to be uh, interpolation of one and the uh, normalized document length controlled by a parameter b here. So you can see here, when we first divide the length of the document by the average document length, this not only gives us some sense about uh, how this document is compared with the average document length, 
but also gives us a benefit of not worrying about the unit of uh, lens. We can measure the lens by words or by characters. Anyway, uh, this normalizer has an interesting property. First, we see that if we set the parameter b to 0, then the value would be 1. So there's no uh, pen, uh, lens normalization at all. So b, in this sense, controls the lens normalization. Whereas if we set b to a non-zero value, then the normalizer would look like this. Right? So the value would be higher for documents that are longer than the average document length. Whereas the value of the normalizer would be short, would be smaller for shorter documents. So in this sense, we see there is a penalization for long documents, and there is a reward for short documents. The degree of penalization is controlled by b because if we set b to a larger value, then the normalizer would look like this. There's even more penalization for long documents and more reward for the short documents. By adjusting B, which varies from 0 to 1, we can control the degree of lens normalization. So if we plug in this lens normalization uh, factor into the vector space model ranking functions that we have already examined, then we will end up uh, uh, having the following formulas. And these are in fact the state-of-the-art vector space model formulas. So let's look at, let's take a look at the, uh, each of them. The first one is called a pivoted lens normalization vector space model. And a reference in the end has detail about the derivation of this model. And here we see that it's basically the TF-IDF weighting model that we have uh, discussed. The IDF component should be uh, very familiar now uh, to you. There is also a query term frequency component here. And then in the middle, there is the normalized TF. And in this case, we see we used a, a double logarithm, as we discussed before. And this is to achieve a sublinear transformation. But we also put a document lens normalizer in the bottom. Right? So this would cause penalization for long document, because the larger the denominator is, then the smaller the TF weight is. And this is of course controlled by the parameter B here. And you can see again, if B is set to zero, then there, there is no lens normalization. Okay, so uh, this is one of the two most effective vector space model formulas. The next one called a BM25 or, or copy is also similar in that it also has an IDF component here and a query TF component here. But in the middle, the normalization is a little bit different. As we explained, there is this or copy TF transformation here. And that does sublinear transformation with the upper bound. In this case, we have put the lens normalization factor here we are adjusting uh, k, but it achieves a similar factor just because we put a normalizer in the denominator. Therefore, again, if a document is longer, then the term weight would be smaller. So you can see after we have gone through all the analysis that we talked about, and we have in the end reached basically the state of the art retrieval functions. So, so far we have talked about the mainly how to place the document vector in the vector space. And this has played an important role in uh, determining the effectiveness of the retrieval function. But there are also other dimensions where we did not really examine in detail. For example, uh, can we further in improve the instantiation of the dimension of the vector space model? Now, we've just assumed the bag of words representation, so each dimension is a word. But obviously, we can consider many other choices. For example, stem words. Those are the words that have been transformed uh, into 
the same root form so that the computation and the computing will all become the same and they can be matched. We can do stop word removal. Uh, this is to remove some very common words that don't carry any content like the, uh, or of. We can use phrases to define dimensions. We can even use latent semantic analysis to find uh, some clusters of words that represent a latent concept as one dimension. We can also use smaller units like a character n-grams. Those are uh, sequences of um, n characters uh, for dimensions. Uh, however, in practice, uh, people have found that the bag of words representation with phrases is still the, uh, the most uh, effective one and it's also efficient. Uh, so this is still so far the most popular dimension instantiation method and it's used in all the major search engines. I should also mention that uh, sometimes we need to do language specific and domain specific tokenization and this is actually very important as uh, we might have variations of terms that might prevent us from matching them with each other even though they mean the same thing. In some languages like Chinese, there is also the challenge in segmenting uh, text to obtain word boundaries because it's just a sequence of characters. A word might, might correspond to one character or two characters or even three characters. So it's easier in English when we have a space to separate the words but in some other languages we may need to do some natural language processing to figure out the, where are the boundaries for words. There is also uh, a possibility to improve the similarity function and so far we have used the dot product but one can imagine there are other measures for example we can measure the cosine of the angle between two vectors or we can use Euclidean uh, distance measure and these are all possible, but dot product seems still the best. And one reason is because it's very general. In fact, it's uh, sufficiently general if you uh, consider the possibilities of doing weighting in different ways. So for example, cosine measure can be regarded as the dot product of two normalized vectors. That means we first normalize each vector and then we take the dot product that would be equivalent to the cosine measure. I just uh, mentioned that the BM25 uh, seems to be one of the most effective formulas. But there has been also further development in improving BM25, although uh, none of these works have uh, changed the BM25 fundamentally. So in one line work, people have derived the BM25F. Here F stands for field. And this is to use BM25 for documents with structures. So for example, you might consider title field, the abstract or body of the research article, or even anchor text on the web pages. Those are the text uh, fields that describe links to other pages. And, and these can all be combined uh, with appropriate weights on different fields to help improve scoring for a document. When we use BM25 for such a document, and the obvious choice is to apply BM25 for each field and then combine the scores. Basically, the idea of BM25F is to first combine the frequency counts of terms in all the fields and then apply BM25. Now, this has the advantage of avoiding uh, overcounting the first occurrence of the term. Uh, remember, in the sublinear transformation of TF, the first occurrence is very important and it contributes a large weight. And if we do that for all the fields, then the same term might have gained a, a lot of advantage in every field. But when we combine these word frequencies together, we just do the transformation uh, one time. At that time, then the extra occurrences will not be counted as fresh first occurrences. And this method has been uh, working very well for uh, scoring structured documents. The other line of extension is called a BM25+. Plus. In this line, researchers have addressed the problem of over of long documents by BM25. 
So to address this problem, the fix is actually quite simple. We can simply add a small constant to the TF normalization formula. But what's interesting is that we can analytically prove that by doing such a small modification, we will fix the problem of over penalization of long documents by the original BM25. So the new formula called BM25 plus is empirically and analytically shown to be better than BM25. So to summarize uh, all what we have said about the vector space model, uh, here are the major uh, takeaway points. First, in such a model, we use the similarity notion of relevance, assuming that the relevance of a document with respect to a query is basically proportional to the similarity between the query and the document. So naturally, that implies that the query and document must be represented in the same way. And in this case, we represent them as vectors in high dimensional vector space, where the dimensions are defined by uh, words or concepts or terms in general. And we generally need to use a lot of heuristics to design the ranking function. We use uh, some examples to show the need for uh, several heuristics, including TF weighting and transformation and IDF weighting and document length normalization. These major heuristics are the most important heuristics uh, to ensure such a general ranking function to work well for all kinds of text. And finally, BM25 and pivot normalization seem to be the most effective formulas out of the vector space model. Now I have to say that I, I've put BM25 in the category of vector space model, but in fact the BM25 has been derived using probabilistic modeling. So the reason why I've put it in the vector space model is first, the ranking function actually has a nice interpretation in the vector space model. We can easily see it looks very much like a vector space model with a special weighting function. The second reason is because the original BM25 has a somewhat different form of IDF. And that form of IDF actually doesn't really work so well as the standard IDF that you have seen here. So as an effective retrieval function, BM25 should probably use uh, a heuristic modification of the IDF to make it even more look like a vector space model. There are some additional readings. The first is a paper about the pivoted lens normalization. It's an excellent example of using empirical data analysis to suggest the need for lens normalization and then further derive the uh, lens normalization formula. The second is the original paper where BM25 was proposed. The third paper has a thorough discussion of BM25 and its extensions, particularly BM25F. And finally, the last paper has a discussion of improving BM25 to correct the uh, over of long documents.